Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name's Emma. Beside me is my husband Ash and our children Minky, Dave, Cookie and Tiny Teabag. This is my identical twin sister Suze. We speak a lot about her and we vlog our daily lives here. Thank you for joining us. Oh wow everybody. Emma from the present if you're watching this video. It's just a bit of an intro because all the clips are filmed from Friday when she came into hospital it'll all be a blur it might not make sense it was just bits here and there um, the surgeons have just been in to say her blood work is a lot better um, antibiotics have worked and just waiting for the hospice referral. The only thing we're struggling with is her pain management, depending on what shift of staff we've got. Some are just not, there's no sense of urgency. She needs it every two hours. She doesn't want a syringe driver and that's her choice, so she needs it every two hours. Or she's in extreme pain to the point where she's sick which means all of the meds she's taken have then gone and no one knows what levels are in her. Then it takes another two people to sign it off to give her some more. And then she's got to wait longer. It's really hard. It's really hard. And, um, you know, it, I, don't, I don't bother the nurses. I will clean up. Susie's bed, I will clean her up, I will do all the care. Whereas everybody else in here, bless them, I don't I don't know, I'm so frightened of getting poorly myself. I think in this day and age you need to be frightened of getting poorly because if you haven't got anyone to look after you, you know sometimes we're left in here with the buzzer going for 40 minutes. Oh, it's it's really tough. She's just gone back to sleep now after the pain meds. She's hugging a sick ball, but thank goodness she's not been sick. And she's just got some gabapentin, paracetamol, and the docusate ready to take. Um, a few friends have been in. Barry came in. Brought this picture of me and Sue's. Me and Suze, Nikki, Rob, Barry, in Thailand in 2011-2012. Look at Suze, all tanned, way more tanned than me. So Suze has got one and I've got one. So what I'm going to try and do is just knit together the clips I've taken from Friday and put them in after this clip. Uh, it might be a longer video, so I might have to split it up. And I want, I want to show you the video of the Thai lady Susie that came to pray over Susie, which was really beautiful. Um, but yeah, bear with me. Thank you all for helping. You know, you've given me such a massive relief that when I can't work, you're all helping me. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The the relief is, it's immeasurable. It's immeasurable. Oh, quick one. This is what we go through, sort of every couple of hours. So there's the sick bowl. I have all these ready. We've got the Conti dry wipes, the syringe for water. Then you've got the wash bowl she wears one of these large yellow pads and then one of these large wraparounds over the top of that so I have all these ready you know for two or three times during the day night I take her to the toilet clean her all up with all of this and then I've got another load ready to go again for the next time.
but it is, it's terrifying, you know, if you've got no one to help you. If Suze didn't have me here now, God, I don't know what would happen. I don't know what would happen. So I'm sorry if this, um, the video that you're about to watch now is, you know what we've gone through over the last few days. So this is just um, bits of here, there and everywhere. Uh, and you know she has been given two to three months now so just got to try and keep her as comfortable as possible for that time um, and get her into the hospice as well so you know it's triggering videos so just be aware Morning everybody, it's Friday morning and I've just had the call to say of Susie, she rang me herself, she said please don't worry but they said I'm going to die if I don't go into hospital now so I said right, right I'll, I'll just grab my things and I'll come and I'll drive to you She's got no, nothing in her blood, it's empty. No haemoglobin, no iron, no, no nothing. So just hoping that they can maybe pump her full of uh, plasma or I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> but she didn't want an ambulance or anything because it makes her feel so ill and frightened. So she's, um. Jason's taking her and I'm all the way over at the bottom of Wakefield so I'm um, 10 minutes from home I've got to rush just going to rush home and get all my bag the phone charger and my, my tablets and things I'm kicking myself because I should have kept them in the car stupid me so stupid, I could have just kept him in the car. I used to keep him in the car and I got complacent. So, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get there. I'm just gonna get there. I'll speak to you soon. I'll speak to you all soon. Need to talk to you all just while I'm driving, keep me calm. So I've, I've I zoomed home, got changed because Paul and Brenda's two of my clients, the little the little Frenchie jumped all over me, muddy poopy paws. So I quickly got changed, got my bag head's racing so I thought if I come and talk to you then I've got my head can't race into other stuff just concentrate on the road I'm talking to you lot um, I'm hoping I can find somewhere to park at the hospital because you have to pay an extortionate amount of money to park there um, but I know they do stamp your ticket like in exceptional circumstances but there's there's not often spare car parking spaces there they did build like um, 
a multi-story on the site of that hospital after years of it really struggling but I remember last time that time when Sue's got rushed in some people that worked there just told me to, to park in a certain spot and I put a note in my window hoping that they'll take pity on on me you know not have to pay to stay there because it really really adds up so I'm hoping I'm just going to do that again and if it if it doesn't you know if I have to pay I have to pay and then I'll hopefully only have to pay like a day and then I can get my ticket stamped um I do have like friends and stuff that live around the hospital might be able to let me use a parking space but it just means walking then from wherever they live into the town to the hospital um and now what, what's going through my head is I'm just going to get get there she won't want to see me cry so I've I'll get that out now and then I'll just talk to her um play things on my phone so she can hear it that she likes uh try and help Jason supposed to help people when you can't help yourself oh my god got myself um rainbow energy smoothie and a cheese string to help just to keep me going so I need to keep I need to get on keep all my energy I really don't know what I've just thrown into that bag pants socks pair of leggings jumper phone charger vitamins tablets hairbrush toothbrush sweat wipes feels different to last time. I've rung Ash, bless him, and my clients, and just said that Ash will be coming to them. Um, it does mean a lot of extra work for him. But, um, It's, we've got to keep working, hopefully we won't be too short. I've got a quarter of a tank of diesel, that's fine. I've got about 35 miles from where I am now. Um, said to Ash we can we we can do it can't we and he said yeah yes of course we can and I said yeah because we have to Come on, Emma. Come on, cars, let me out. If you weren't going 40 and a 30, I could get out.
so busy. <sighs> Come on, just let a gap open up for me, please. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Man. Thank you for helping me. Guys, thank you for listening. Keep me, keep my brain on a slight divert. But I'll leave you in a sec because I'm getting on the motorway and uh, have to stay focused. Okay. Right, guys, I will see you in a bit. Just um, arriving at the hospital. Uh, I'm going to go in the multi story car park and just pay and then see what's what. We'll see what's what. <sighs> so expensive. Right, okay. Let's find somewhere. <sighs> right, me, I'm just gonna go down and see what I need to do. Reparking. So I've just been to the main reception. They said that she's in A&E. So I'm, I'm just walking around there. Uh, just to get there. I just wanted to update everybody. Um, they're filling her full of like fluids because there's no haemoglobin to carry any oxygen round in a blood um, and they've done they've got her on some antibiotics uh, plasma something else and um, she's just been down for a CT scan and they're now giving her a good wash because she's messed her uh, bathrobe and everything I'm going to get her some disposable better stuff to wear. She's not allowed to eat anything, but I've come just to get Costa and a sandwich. I feel guilty eating in front of her, but she's told me not to worry because she's not hungry anyway. And, um... I'm just going to go back in. Terry's still here. Um, Jason's nipped off. Obviously got pepper and things to look after. Ash is going through all of our routes to try and do the rest of the clients, but I will keep I'll keep vlogging what I can. Don't know when you'll all see this, but at some point you will, I'm guessing.
41 in the morning. Can we not just duct tape it on? <laughs> you know, put some, put another put like some sort of sticky dressing over the whole thing. <laughs> How are you feeling now, Tooth? I think I feel better and I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't want to jump to my feet. No. Just lay back and get a bit more kit then. I want to. Okay. Tiny bit of protein will really help. Going back to my car to get a change of clothes. Um, and my pink cardigan. But the stents are working really well. All of the infection, I mean, like, it was like litres of it. It was all draining, draining out, and now left kidneys running like clear urine. Obviously, infection markers are still high, and her right kidney 
it's really not working very well. It's, um, it doesn't really work anymore. But um, a lot better than it was. It's quite noisy here, probably not going to be able to hear me. I've just left Jason with her. Um, and she's had some more painkillers and gone to sleep. But uh, I think once this has calmed down a bit, they will have a chat about what we do moving forward. Doc the doctor came round. And whether that... I mean, she's going to need 24-hour care really now because she can't move much. And Jason's like... He said he'll take a week off work. And, I, and I'm... Um, in a better position to do that but I said don't do it for like next week in case um, she's obviously got to stay in here and be looked after a bit better um, and it's also very hard to move her it's like if you're not trained you need like three people because she's in so much pain and discomfort to like roll her over and pull all the sheets and all the pads and the gown and everything off that needs changing and then to like hold her there while you then put all everything clean back under which of course is so much easier on a single hospital bed than it is her bed at home. But ultimately it's up to Sue's. Um, and if me and Jason and people can maybe try and look after at home if she wants that then you know that we'll do that um, but her Macmillan nurse and the doctors will let us know what the best option would be and then Susan can make a decision on that so that's if she's going to be well enough to go back home but they've said they're going to leave the stents in, the external stents in now, because the internal ones will just block again. So um, while these external ones are working, as horrible as it is, they're working, so it's best to let them do their job and let that work. So um, She, she looks like she's got a bit more colour back in her cheeks and the blood transfusion is working but I've got to get some I've got to get some sleep today better go and get the stuff out of my car it's so much quieter in here tonight There's a million miles away But when I'm close to you I pray that I'll never have to leave There's nothing more in life I want Than just to feel your beating heart And let you know that I am near 